We send emails, we make phone calls, we do our banking, and we do all sorts of communications with the internet. But very few of us actually know what the internet is and how this whole thing all began. In this video, I'm going to be explaining what the internet is. It's going to be a little technical, but I bet you are going to enjoy it. Let's get into the video. The internet was originally started out as a military tool out of sheer panic by a particular country but right now it has become an indispensable tool that most of us can't do without okay so can you do without the internet i don't know anybody that can do without the internet at least the kind of people that we relate with it has become larger and more important than most or if not all the technologies that have come before it. The internet has been around since 1970s, but the public only gained access to the internet in the 1990s. And now nobody can do without the internet. But as with everything, there has been a few key moments that had led the internet to what it is today. In this lecture, which is an introduction to advanced computer applications in public health, we are going to be talking about those key moments and see how those key moments have a place in public health. The year is 1957. The Soviet Union has just sent out their first unmanned satellite into orbit which is the Sputnik 1. This led to the fear of a missile gap between uh, the United States and the Soviet Union. In order to secure America, the Americans set up what we all know as DARPA in 1958, which is the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. At that time, Believe it or not, knowledge was only transferred by people physically, okay, even though they were computers. So DAPA planned a large-scale computer network that will help to accelerate and accentuate knowledge transfer. This network will become known as the ARPANET. Two other networks are actually worthy of mention at this point in time. The first, which is the NPL, which stands for National Physics Lab of England, was actually a commercial network. The second is the scientific network called Cyclades, which belonged to the French. All these three, the military, the scientific, and then the commercial, came up today to form the basis of what we understand as the internet. So we'll talk about these three one by one okay and see their contributions with the ARPANET they had a big mainframe computer right but in order to use the mainframe computer they didn't want people to use it directly so they had to have smaller computers that were connected to the mainframe computer those smaller computers were put in a network okay and data and information was transmitted between those smaller computers and if they needed bigger computing power with one single computer it could connect with the bigger mainframe computer so those small computers that were put together in a network were being controlled and information was passing through each passing from one computer to the other through what is called the network control protocol this is just like a set of rules that allows this process to go on very well okay however this process was not very efficient as it had some delays it had some issues so it was replaced with a more efficient transmission control protocol right this one allows more efficient transmission and also verification of the information that is passed through giving it more security it's worthy of mention at this junction that robert w taylor was the one that actually set up the 
ARPANET. While the TCP was set up by two individuals, Vinton Seth and Robert Kahn. So we move over to what was happening in England, all right? At around the same time, in England, the National Physical Lab, the NPL, actually set up also a network of computers, but for a different purpose. The purpose was purely commercial. You know, the British are experts with things that have to do with commercial entities and the rest, okay? So, and because this is a, was built on a commercial basis with a commercial focus, right? We expect a lot of users, financial users, a lot of people on the, their network of computers. So they had also a problem. This time the problem was with traffic that was going from one computer to another within that same network, okay? So they developed what is called the packet switching. So the sent files were divided into smaller files so that they can easily pass through the network and they become assembled back to a whole file at the receiving computer. And this was marvelous. This was a good development. Moving over to the French side, and at about the same time also, the French developed a system that was called the cyclades. Now, with the French, they didn't have as much... Um, their, their budget was not as big as that of the Americans. So they focused on creating small networks of computers. And then they now focused on connecting one network to another network. Okay, so they had a network of networks interconnected together. Giving birth to the term internet so a combination of all these three the DAPAS TCP the NPL with packet switching and the cyclades with the inter internet working okay network of networks gave rise to a way in which computers could be connected to one another however there was still something that was missing what was missing here was how can this cover large areas? Okay, because the Americans were doing their stuff, the British were doing their own stuff, and then the French were doing their own stuff. How can this cover very large areas? Okay. How can ordinary computers connect to this network? Computers that are far away, computers that belong to other individuals, computers that are in other countries, how can they get connected to this network? And this is when the phone companies came in. So because phone service was already in existence, these companies were already providing communication for people all over the world. So this was a good opportunity. The phone companies came up with the X2.5 protocol, which allows these connections through their phone lines or through their phone service. So we have a network of computers we have a service that allows now all these things to be connected together what is now left success right but well, not so fast we need some form of standardization okay because we're talking of different countries different areas different um, uh, different understandings so the international organization for standardization the ISO sought to develop a kind of standard reference that all these connections will be based on. And so they developed what is called the OSI, which is the Open System Interconnection Reference Model. The TCP assimilated the preferences of the OSI reference model and this finally gave way to what we all know, which is the TCP IP protocol. So you hear IP, IP address, IP address. This is what gave birth to that IP protocol. And this became a standard with guaranteed compatibility for networking of computers. Okay. And thus finally merging all these networks together to have a network 
of networks. And this, in a nutshell, created the internet as we know it today. So if I may ask you that has been patiently watching this, what is the internet? So we can simply define the internet as a vast network of networks, which allows connections between computers and devices through telephone connections and lines. And through this internet, people have been able to communicate, send messages from anywhere and any part of the world. This is a brief history of the internet. So watch out for our next lecture. In our next lecture, we're going to be talking about the internet and the World Wide Web. What? You thought they were the same? Nah, they're not the same. They're totally different things entirely. People mistaking them together, but I'm going to clear this out in our next video. So see you in the next video. Until then, peace.